10 years ago, I came to Malaysia and to Kuala Lumpur for the first time. And uh, I toured around the whole country of Malaysia as part of a Southeast Asia trip that I did in that time. And anyway, now I'm back. So let's have a look in Kuala Lumpur today and see what's changed. When I first came to KL 10 years ago, I have to say it was a pretty dirty place, very run down. But the old center has a lot of beautiful old buildings. And it's, it has changed a little bit. This street, this area seems to have been renovated a bit with a lot of places that look like they're run by younger people similar to what you see in Bangkok these days bringing some life into the old town again which is really great but once you get past this street into the other parts of the old town it's uh, still the same as it was 10 years ago which is pretty grimy with all beautiful old buildings falling apart actually I guess it's just been getting worse as time has gone by it's strange really this they're sitting on a gold mine if they renovated all of the old town and made it nice like this street I'm sure it would really increase tourism numbers a lot and if they don't they're gonna lose a lot of their heritage seems that there's money for for building new buildings a lot impressive tall modern towers and similar projects but the, there's not money to renovate the old town but it's all in original condition and it seems very strange to me really a missed opportunity and I hope there'll be a, I hope there'll be people who make it happen at some point that it's not all lost. This is the entrance to the famous Jalan Hekaling Street. So you can see this street and the side street here. So it's definitely not renovated as much along here as the street where we started up but 
it's a bit renovated, yeah. As you can see, a bit. Once we check out the street I mentioned before with the market, you'll see what I mean though. That it's mostly very grimy in the old town of Kuala Lumpur. Looks like some of the backpackers places haven't opened up since Covid hit. The place where I'm staying is very dirty and uh, very cheap, which is great, yeah. But not so great with the dirty part. I mean, how hard is it to clean, right? But I guess they lost a lot of money through the Covid times. I'm not trying to make excuses for them, but uh, yeah. Before Covid times, 10 years ago, I remember it was very dirty in the place where I stayed at that time as well. So it just seems to be a regional thing. If you want cheap, you get dirty usually, but not always. train let's head down here and have a look this is a big indoor market it's kind of interesting most of the packaging of things seems to be very bright with big brand names and then like hard to figure out what's inside without squinting at the fine print on the package. These are the kind of food places I like the most in Malaysia. And you see the locals normally eat these kind of places. <laughs> really yummy usually for around oh maybe seven to ten ringgit twelve ringgit depending what you want how many different things and so on for a nice big healthy plate it fills you up gives you tons of energy delicious it's great to be back here and enjoy the local food again here's the other end of the market street See, there's some old buildings that go further out that way. Riding on the footpath, Thai style, except we're in Malaysia. So you can see there's some regional similarities. But in general, I find Malaysia's a bit more relaxed than, uh, for example, Thailand. I mean, all the countries... Oh, oh, oh. It's been noisy. All the countries in the region have similarities and have their own special things about them which make them unique which makes it really worth traveling to all the countries in the region to compare. But it's interesting to compare them for sure, to, to note the similarities and the differences. So, you might hear me do that sometimes. Just 
place looks interesting. I think Chinese style. Normally I like the Indian food when I'm in Malaysia. But Malaysia is wonderful for food, for sure. It's a great temple. quite strange with the footpaths in the old town they don't match you can see it looks like on the other side someone's tried to renovate in a more modern style but it still looks kind of classic on this side there's these strange lines here maybe for the drain pipes I guess maybe the drain pipes were not under the footpath Okay, we're coming back to the entrance to the market where we were before and we made a big loop around it. So let's have a look inside it and it will give you a better idea of what I mean about how it could be really cleaned up. put in jail pretty quickly the laws in Malaysia are not friendly towards people who smoke certain things it is what it is but okay I always respect the laws of whatever country I go to I think it's just sensible if you're gonna be a guest somewhere you should have respect of course it doesn't always go both ways but so you see it's, it's quite a nice market in some ways it's kind of a tourist market but I don't think there's that much tourism happening at the moment still just starting to pick up as COVID is finished though when I was here 10 years ago I don't remember that there were really any more foreigners than I have seen so far today just a sprinkling sprinkling really Malaysia is a very colorful country in general and it's a very multicultural country with the with the local Malays and the Indian population, Chinese people that have been here for a long time coming through. As you could see earlier, we passed different kinds of temples, different religions. 
I wouldn't call it a melting pot because it seems like for the most part the different groups have their own kind of scenes although obviously everyone works and communicates with each other and the country takes over quite well but you can see the cultures are kind of separate which is fine why should everything have to be mixed up yeah so it's great with all the different influences everyone can do their own thing it doesn't have to be all totally mixed up why should it it's, it's much more interesting with all the different influences and styles and overall it's a lot of harmony in the country although some people might say people know their their place in the country and the society and uh, that's why it kind of works some people might say that hmm. of course outside the old area there's also modern areas very modern so you can live modern style you can live in the old style it's up to you if you have the money to afford it okay so we're back out here where we were before All right. now let's head down to the right. central central market and the Madaka square right. and maybe some more things after that okay let's go Okay, we've crossed the road and we're going to continue on down the same direction. street art around here. I've been a big fan of street art and graffiti since the 1980s when I was hanging out in New York City a lot. But that's another story for another time. Sometime I'll probably tell you all about it. And we have this walking street here, which I haven't checked out before actually. Not that I remember, maybe I did 10 years ago. It might be very different from then now. And there's this great looking old central market. Which we have to have a look at for sure. Actually, I think I remember coming down here 10 years ago. I don't think this covered part was here in that time. I believe there's some old buildings going a few blocks down there before it kind of finishes up. Let's have a look in this central market. It looks fantastic and I don't remember looking inside before. Hazar <laughs> Seni. Oh, 
a nice place, what a cool elevator. And I'm sure it's a very old one. And do I see pies? Oi. How much are these? have to come back here in a minute or two. Not a bad price. That looks interesting up there. We'll go up and have a look soon. Okay, second level. side looks more interesting. Let's see if we can get in there or not. Should be looks like a cafe or something. Put these looks all at you. Okay, I think it's just more kind of kiosk type places. This would be nice for a cafe up here. Could look down on everyone. Ah, this is a nice one. It doesn't have the view looking down, but I'm after. What's up there? Oh, cool, a food court. For people who want to watch their budget, which is always a smart move when you're traveling. Oh, that's great. The cool stairway down there too. Okay. Well, we really should have a look through this food court. It looks fantastic. It has the old style tables that used to be in cafes throughout Southeast Asia back in the day. Not many places still use them. These lovely old tables. And it's got these fantastic booths. I love booth seating from back in my time when I was hitchhiking around the USA when I was a teenager and I used to stop in American diners and truck stops where they had booth seating and I really loved it. Very comfortable and gives you a little bit of privacy as well for talking with people. Cool. Alright, let's head back downstairs there. So there's a stairway leading right up into the middle of the food court as well. Good people watching spot right there. Okay, now we've finished the tour of the market. Let's head back out the way we came in. Let's have a look along the other side of the ground floor of the market as well. Very cute. The 
can just have a peek outside at the covered area. Okay, so we've gone through the center ground floor of the market and up stairs past and then back along the ground floor along the side part where it's next to the outside covered area. come out the back of the market there here's the river that flows through the center of old KL Still some quite nice old buildings around here. Let's head over this way to the Murdaka or Murdeka. Murdeka? Murdaka? Murdeka? Nothing to do with nothing to do with murder, of course. Not in this day and age at least. But uh it's a big kind of a field. It would have been perfect in the old days for chopping the chopping off of heads of naughty people. Now this is a famous mosque. What is it called? I don't remember. This is a pretty cool looking place. Wow, I like that. Okay, let's head along this way. This is a really nice area along here. I think I did not walk along this part in the past. I walked kind of around this area, so this is a part I don't remember. I'm sure I haven't walked exactly here before. Cool. Nice to see something new. Okay, so now we're heading to the Merodeca. <laughs>
this is the Meradeca. Which I guess would have been the center of the city when the British were here parading around. Looks pretty cool though. It's quite a view from here. Here's the here's the modern part of KL. Let's have a quick look at this area. Yeah, I can do that. a glimpse of the Petronas Towers. I'm not gonna go all the way to them to get the obligatory close-up and all this kind of stuff. I, I saw them 10 years ago when they were the tallest. I've been told they're not the tallest anymore. So right now I'm in the middle of a lot of tall buildings here and uh, looks like there's a walkway like a kind of a skywalk. I'm gonna check it out seems to be something for the public connecting a few different buildings but I don't know anything about it really but I'm right in the thick of all the skyscrapers here let's check it business district <coughs> to connect one of the best shopping malls with the Petronas Towers. It's very good. 